Namaste. I'm Rev. Wendy Craig Purcell from the Unity Center here in beautiful San Diego. Our mission statement is transforming lives and healing our world. Each week, we partner with Spirit to bring that statement to life through our Sunday services, social media, email, and our YouTube channel, and in the work we're doing with our newly created Anti-Racism Institute. Together with our Unity community, we are working to be the change we most want to see in our world. Dealing with tough stuff. So this lesson, these ideas are pulled from the story in the Old Testament of David and Goliath. And I asked you at the earlier part of our service, how many of you had some familiarity with the story? And most of your hands went up. You know, I think what is true for us in unity is we usually wind up here as a spiritual community or spiritual practice, having been somewhere else first that we perhaps grew up in mainline Christianity or traditional Christianity, perhaps even fundamentalist Christianity. Sometimes we wind up here out of Judaism or our path had been Buddhism, but we wind up here after we'd been somewhere else. And for the most part, we have some knowledge of some of the stories, especially one as familiar and, um, and, and understandable, really, as the story of, of David and Goliath. But what is true for us in unity is that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, that we don't ignore the Bible, we just look at it through mystical and metaphysical eyes. We don't see it as the inerrant word of God. We don't see it as something that can be taken literally or even read as you might read any other book. Usually when we read a book, we start, what, at the beginning, and we go, what, to the end, right? And the Bible really is not best read that way, and nor is it best read without first having a whole lot of other understanding about the times and the cultures and the people and idiomatic expression and, and symbols and on and on and on. But having said that, there is still wisdom in the stories. And I think that the reason that there is is because in, in some way, the stuff that we struggle with is the stuff that we as people have always struggled with. The circumstances may be different, but we struggle with some of the same kinds of things, fear and doubt and things not working out and trying to find a better way and, and trying to live a better life for ourselves and for our family and dealing with the stuff that throws us off track. And that's not really anything new, right? And so we can look in sacred texts. Ours happen to be rooted in the Bible. We can look at sacred texts and read stories and go, oh, I can kind of relate to that character. I've experienced some of that too. So anyway, who was David and who was Gol Goliath and what can we learn from that whole story? So. The story of David is really kind of a great saga of the ancient world. David has often been talked about as an ideal man, as a great and wonderful king. He's revered in, in Judaism. He eventually set up a dynasty, a kingdom that lasted for 400 years. He helped to reunite the 12 tribes of Israel. He started out as a, you know, as a shepherd boy. And so we can get this sense of David as this really, you know, really perfect kind of guy. And the truth of the matter is, if you actually read the story of David, David had some serious faults and problems. He was very good looking, he was very charming, he was very much a ladies man, he had a very dysfunctional family. So there's a lot of stuff about him and his flaws as a human being that, in a way, I think, make him a bit more approachable. Because while we believe in unity that we are each born in original blessing and that we have the spark of, of God, the divine within us, we also have our humanity, right? We also have the stuff that if you believe as I do in, in, in uh, reincarnation, that we have come to each lifetime to work through and to deal with. So we are this and we are that. 
we are the divine and we are human and we're working through our human difficulties and challenges. And that's why when we look at characters and can see ourselves in them, they give us, I think, the opportunity to be inspired that, wow, if they could deal with that, then, you know, I think I can deal with whatever's up for me as well, whatever my tough stuff is. So now, who is Goliath? What do you remember about Goliath? Right, you probably remember you were told from the Old Testament that he's this great big guy, and he was part of the Philistine group of people. And, and the Israelites, David was an Israelite, the Israelites, their biggest enemy was the Philistines. And they, didn't, they did not like each other at all. Goliath was the biggest of all of them. So get this image of a very formidable opponent. He was trained in, in fighting, he had armor, he had weaponry, he embodied everything that the Israelites feared. So now we have David, who at the beginning of this story is a shepherd boy. And what do you think of when you think of a shepherd boy? Do you think of someone heavily clad in armor? No, I mean, think of a baby lamb, right? They're adorable and cute, and caring for, shepherd, caring for sheep was, was a very different kind of... Um, job training than I'm sure Goliath would have, would have had. So David was a young man when this story took place, and the battle scene is important, and the battle scene is described in quite a bit of detail, I'm going to summarize it here uh, in the story, but you have the Philistine army on one side, hillside, mountaintop, and you have the Israelite army on the other side, and a valley separating them. And remember, they're, they're enemies, and they're wanting to capture each other's spoils, their, their goods. And you have Goliath on the Philistine side, taunting the, the Israelites, taunting them for 40 days and 40 nights. Does that sound familiar? You've heard that before, right? Noah and the flood, right? 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus in the wilderness, how long? 40 days and 40 nights. Do you think that's a coincidence? Do you think they mean literally 40 days, 40 nights? No. It meant a cycle in, uh, of completion until whatever it was that was to be done was, was done. So you have this Goliath, this giant of a man, part of a very fierce army, taunting and threatening the Israelites. You have King Saul, the king of the Israelite army, afraid, trying to figure out how he's going to protect his people against this very formidable army and this very, very big guy at the front of it that's taunting him. And so as he's trying to think about what he can do, David, the shepherd boy, comes forward and kind of raises his hand and says, call on me. I can fight Goliath. Now, if you're King Saul and you're looking at this shepherd boy and you see Goliath over here and the Philistines, what are you probably thinking? Right, you're laughing, right? Like, no way, not, not this guy. This is, he's not going to be able to do this for, for us. And so if you're David, what do you think you have to do to Saul? You have to kind of convince Saul that you're up for the task. You know, trust me. Here I am, Lord, right? Here I am. Use me. Use me. Take me. And so David built a case for himself, trying to convince Saul. And he says, you know, I, I have been rescuing animals out of, I've been rescuing my father's lambs out of the mouth of a bear and out of the mouth of a lion. I don't even think bears and lions were in that part of the world at the same time then. So that's why you can't take all of this literally, right? But, but David says, but you know, I've done these. I've rescued these animals out of the, the mouth of these fierce animals so I can go up against Goliath. Now, you've got to love the guy, right? I do. I mean, can you relate? Can you relate to him? Can you think of a time in your life when you were really dealing with some tough stuff? Or you, can you relate to a time in your life where you really felt, I'm, I'm ready for this challenge. 
There might be adults or smarter people around me telling me, no, we don't think you can do it. But there's that part of you that says, but I really think I can. Raise your hand if you can, can call back a memory like that, right? That's why you're like David. You're like Goliath. You're like Saul. We're like all of these people in some, in some respects. So Saul must have been either pretty desperate or really willing to consider what David was saying, or David must have been a great salesman, or all of the above, because Saul eventually says, okay, you can go ahead and do it. But before he sends David into battle, do you remember something he tries to do to help David? Yeah, and to me, this is a really important part of the story. So we have King Saul taking a look at David, being willing to, to take a chance on him against this really great big giant that's been bullying and taunting the Israelites now for quite some time. And David wants to help, or Saul wants to help David. So Saul decides to give David his armor, because remember, Goliath is mightily clad. And so David puts on the gear, the armor that King Saul gives him, and he tries to move around in it. And he can't. He can't. If you've ever really seen armor, it's, it's not meant to move around in. It's meant to keep you protected, right? But it's not meant to. He tries to move around it, can't move around in it. And he finally says to, to Saul, no, you know, essentially, I've got to do it my own way. And so he does do it his own way. And I know you know the end of the story. He runs to meet Goliath. Goliath is threatening him and taunting him. And, and it takes one look at David with the slingshot and the way David is dressed and thinks, what do you think? What, you're crazy. You're, you come to me like, like a dog. And you have David running toward him, right at him, takes his slingshot, we know he has the five stones, kind of symbolic there. Takes one shot and strikes Goliath right in the middle of the forehead and slays him and slays him. How many of you grew up with the story or the image of the slingshot being just this really wimpy thing? I did. I did. But scholars say not so. Not so, that it was actually quite a significant military weapon. Because in the hands of somebody that was skillful, it could be used in a very damaging, very fatal way, and had a level of protection to it. The level of protection being because you could shoot your stone or whatever else you might put in the slingshot far, some distance, it kept the person wielding the slingshot a safe distance from the other with the sword. Ah, so maybe, maybe David was better equipped than we first might have thought he was. But anyway, what, what might this suggest to us to remember when we're facing something that feels like a Goliath in our life? some big, difficult thing that we're facing. You know, I was in Costco the other day, grocery shopping, and filling my cart, and an older man was passing me and just looked at me and they said, God, these prices, we've got to do something. And then he was quick to say to me, you know, I can afford this stuff, but I'm thinking about all of these younger people, younger families starting out. How are they gonna deal with what we're dealing with? Tough stuff, right? Finances right now, making ends meet, can be a very real thing for, for us in this room or online. We may be dealing with the uncertainty of our employment or the uncertainty of what's going on in our retirement accounts, if we're at that place in our lives, or uncertainty and difficult stuff with family issues. I spent an hour counseling somebody on the phone while I was at business meetings this this week who's dealing with a really difficult family situation. One that has been going on for quite a number of years and it's draining the family both literally and financially. We deal with tough stuff. Our spiritual practice doesn't eliminate the tough stuff. I think it can reduce 
the frequency and the amount of tough stuff, but I've yet to find a person that's no matter how much they meditate and pray and devoted they are to their spiritual practice is spared all problems. We have tough things that happen. But those of us who are true to a spiritual approach to our life and who are consistent with spiritual practice are much better equipped to be like David and slay the problem, whatever the problem may be. So here are a few things that I think are reminders and helpful. We've got to admit there's a problem in the first place. And I say that even though it seems obvious, because as I said earlier, there is this shadow side of metaphysics, of new thought, of unity, and of science of mind that spiritually bypasses stuff. We put a nice affirmation over it, but we never really get into what it is that's going on that's a problem in our life to deal with it from a spiritual perspective. Or we say, I, you know, I don't want to turn on the news because I don't want to hear any of that stuff. That's dangerous. We need an informed citizenry so that we can make informed and conscious decisions, right? We don't want to bypass stuff that's difficult or ugly. We need to admit when there's a problem. We need to see the problem rightly. Eric Butterworth, one of my favorite unity ministers, no longer with us, but still powerful in the teachings he left behind, talked about the importance of seeing the problem rightly and then approaching the problem spiritually. So we have to admit there's a problem. Saul admitted there was a problem. The second thing is we need a new and authentic to us approach. Let me say that again. We need a new and authentic approach to solve the problem, authentic to us. Saul couldn't fight the Philistines the way he had been fighting before. He knew that. And that was in part, I think, why he was open to David coming forward. He may not have had a whole lot of volunteers coming forward as, as well. But he was reluctant to try a new way at first, right? Because what did he want to do to David? He wanted to put his armor around David. What did David have to do? It's an important part. David had to be true to himself. He had to be authentic to what he knew was true and right for and about him. When we are dealing with a problem in our life, when we are dealing with tough stuff, we have to admit that it's there, that it's tough, that we might need some help, prayer support, counseling support, life coaching support, but we also have to be authentic. We have to be willing to try something new, perhaps, but whatever it is that's new that we try still has to fit us. Does that make sense? It still has, one size does not fit all. It has to fit you. So as you think about whatever it is that might be in front of you that's kind of difficult right now, can you admit that it's there, that you need some help? And can you be true to yourself and how you're going to meet it? The third is we do have to meet it head on, face on. In the story, we don't have Goliath coming to David. We have David going to Goliath, leaning into the problem, facing it head on. I love the quote I read to you earlier about not running away from the thing that scares us, but running toward it because the only way to deal with the fear is to have to trample it underfoot. How many of you have found it effective to ignore problems in your life? Okay, I thought so. I haven't found it effective either. Does that mean we don't sometimes still try? I mean, think about the last time you know you needed to have a difficult conversation or to deal with some sort of conflict in your life. Did you 
have a part of you that just wished it would go away all on its own, uh, right? Or you just turned and said, I'm, I'm going to pretend it's not there. Like, what, it, what is it with young children? There's up until a certain age, they don't understand the um, permanence of something, right? And so if they, whoops, sorry about that, Eduardo. If they close their eyes and they can't see the thing, they think the thing isn't there anymore. You know, sometimes we can be a little bit like that as, you know, as adults. We have to face this stuff head on. We need to meet it head on. Goliath doesn't usually go away on his own. Sweeping stuff under the carpet doesn't go away on its own. The person I was counseling with this past week, she and her family have been dealing with this situation for years. For years. And she said to me, I'm going to take it on myself. I am going to have the difficult conversation I'm going to say in love what needs to be said because the situation as it is continuing now is not helping anyone. It's just enabling the other and crippling us. That's an example of meeting it head on. And finally, I think we must eradicate the problem at the level of consciousness. To eradicate the problem, the issue, at the level of consciousness, to me, it's sim symbolic and significant that we're told that David slew Goliath and the stone hit him right in the middle of the forehead. We could talk a lot about the third eye, the significance of that. I think just very simplistically, we can look at getting hit in the head, right? Mind consciousness, at the cause, at the root. One of our key concepts in metaphysics is the power of our mind, right? That everything that, that exists is created twice, first in mind, first in thought, and then in physical form. When we're dealing with tough stuff in our life, we do need to admit that there's a problem, Ask for help if we need it. Be authentic in, to ourself in our, in, our, uh, in our approach. Meet it face on. And be sure in meeting it face on that we are not just skimming the surface, but we are getting at the root cause. What is the first cause? What is the cause in consciousness? What is it in me, in my thinking, in my belief system? that is allowing this, whatever this is, to continue to exist. That's what it is to get at, to get at it at the level of consciousness. And where and why that is so important is it's very much like when we are pulling weeds in a garden. We can just whack the top of the weed off and for a while it looks pretty nice, right? But what happens? It comes right back up and stronger, usually, and sometimes more prolifically, because in the chopping off the top, sometimes we're chopping off the seeds and growing more of the very thing that we're trying to get rid of. It's only when we're willing to dig a little deeper and actually get at the root that we're able to eradicate the weed. The same is true in the weeds in our, the garden of our mind, of our life, to get at it, to do the deeper work. And then it seems to be complete and done. Goliath, excuse me, Goliath is gone. So, quick recap. What do we learn? What can we learn? What can we remember from the story of David and Goliath? That we need to be willing to step forward, admitting that there's a problem, admitting that there's something tough in front of us, asking for help if we need it. You have the prayer ministry here. We make it easy. You can text your prayers. You can call your prayers in. You can write a letter if you want to. You can send any. We can ask for help. Help is near at hand. We need to be true to ourselves. I'm so grateful for the work of Brene Brown. Many of you are familiar with, with her work. And one of her main themes is the audacity to be authentic. 
that we need to be authentic. Not perfect, we can't be, but authentic. That we have to face the challenge before us, meet it directly, meet it directly using all the skills and tools that, that we have, and you have many more than you think you do. And in a way, to forget the difference in size between you and Goliath. Some looked at Goliath and said, he's so big, we can't take him on. I think David looked at Goliath and said, he's so big, I can't possibly miss. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs>